Coach Hibner, first things first. Uh, I think we saw today coming uh, three weeks ago. Would that be safe that we saw today coming three weeks ago? Did you did you figure out they were just probably going to cancel three weeks ago and they postponed? Yeah, I think the minute they postponed it, we knew, we all knew it was over. So I don't think there's any problem with with wrestling being what it is and kids have to make weight and you know trying to not train and have any contact with your kids and expect expect there to be a real state tournament is I thought was real unlikely. Yeah, I kind of just I had this feeling right right away like this just can't work. It can't work. And like I talked to uh, Zach Matten, and Zach Matten was a massive one thirteen pounder, right? Yeah. How's that guy hold his weight down long enough? You know what I mean? Like that that's hard. Let alone he's you know they're growing, they're adolescents, they're kids, and then to hold your weight down for those extra couple, you know, would have been over a month. You know what I mean? Like I just don't think it was a thing they could have done. I don't think so either. Yeah, I think there's a lot of kids who just wouldn't have been able to make the weight anymore. Yeah, what? So you guys had an unbelievable district tournament. You had eight qualifiers out of the district. Um, yeah. Did Cole take third at the district? He did. He ended up on the Lissio side and lost uh, two one. So he, you know, like I look at his career. Cole Hevner is about to pop off. Something's gonna happen. Something's finally gonna go his way, dude. This could have been the year. You know what I mean? Like. That guy has had a lot of heartbreak. He's lost in two semifinals. Um, he's right there, though. You know what I mean? Like, something's going to eventually fall your kid's way. Um, what's this like, and how do you keep his spirit and the other other seven qualifiers and the rest of the team? How do you, you as the head coach at Lake Catholic, how do you keep them in good spirits? Well, you know, when this first came out, I was 30 minutes away and drove straight to Lake Catholic and pulled everybody out of class and had them come down to the roster room and, just tried to relate to him as best I could. I mean, I think I was more maybe broke up than those guys were. Um, the kids are really, really resilient, and, you know, they seem to take it pretty well in stride. And, um, you know, but since that day, you know, we've been in this non-contact period, so I, I haven't been able to talk to anybody uh, other than my own son. But later tonight, now that, you know, now that it's official, I'm going to, you know, put some contact out to our guys and, talk to them about what they, you know, can do at home. And, you know, it's on to the next thing, I guess, for us. It was crazy because Graham didn't get 12 guys to their district, you know, and, and that's the big yeah. thing. Like, you guys were right there. You were in a position to to get one of the two trophies, in my opinion. I, I mean, would you have been surprised if Lake Catholic would have went and got either a gold or silver trophy? I, I wouldn't have been. Nobody expected it. But when the brackets came out, I really thought that we had the capability of putting three guys in the finals and maybe three champs. And if we could could have got three guys in the finals with, you know, some other placers, uh, I think we could have been right there. I mean, just stuff like that's heartbreaking. But I, you're all in the same boat. Everybody's in the same boat here, Coach Evner, right? Like, it's not like oh. it's not like yeah. St. Ed's got an advantage and they're wrestling their tournament. You know, nobody's wrestling their tournament, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe the unfortunate thing is that other every other state in the world got to wrestle their state tournament, and Ohio's the only state that didn't get to compete. Yeah, some guy from PA hit me up, and he's like, you got to interview some PA coach, and I was like, wait a minute, did PA's tournament get canceled? And he was like, no, but you should interview him, and I'm like, well, the story right now, man, is how are all these people dealing with this extraordinary situation? All the PA guys are home with their medals. They all got to wrestle their state tournament. And it was like, right. Will Knight put out the tweet of all tweets. Will Knight's like, if the OHSAA would have just started their season a week like they all, like they, they started it a week later this year. And I yeah. listen, hey, I know Will what Will's doing there, and he's not wrong. But at the same time, right. this is the most unforeseen thing that could have happened, right? Like, no one predicts yeah. this. We could, you and I could have never. We've never seen anything of this in our life. You're 50. No. I'm 40. We've never seen anything like this, right? No. Nope. Probably never will again. I, I sure hope not. You know. Um. You know, like so. Your parents, my parents, are around the same age. They're in their 70s. They're the big risk factor, right? And um. Yep. And we know Tom Miller's a, a, a an iron head, right? A blockhead. Um. <laughs> were your parents trying to go to the tournament and watch Cole? Oh, yeah. They were, you know, they were ready to get on the plane and come. And even after, you know, we just got the four, 
we still had a ticket for them, and they were still coming. There, there's no talk of my parents out of uh, coming to watch their grandson Russell. Yeah, and my dad was the same way. He was, he was just not having it. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was gonna go. He was one of my nephew Wyatt qualified. He was one of his four tickets. You know, it was gonna be my brother Tate, his wife, Wyatt's sister, and my dad was gonna be the fourth. You know what I mean? Like, just you weren't talking the guy out of, and he flew up. He watched the SBC or he watched the sectionals of the district. And then, you know, he didn't get to watch the state tournament, but he eventually, my mom was down in Florida by herself, so he flew back. Uh, Not advisable. Yeah. I was like, dude, don't don't fly back. That, that's a horrible decision. But you know what? He's a blockhead. We know that, right? Like, you can't tell him <laughs> anything, right? He's um, a classic. Yeah. Moving forward, how do you guys take, you know, momentum in the, ne- momentum in the next season? You got six qualifiers back, two placers back. Um, from from previous state tournaments, um, what? How do you capitalize on some momentum from that district tournament at least? Well, uh, I think our guys had it in their head that uh, they want to win a state title, if not this year, next year. So you know, we got a great bunch of kids, a great bunch of parents, and an unbelievably good coaching staff. And you know, as soon as we can get back in Lake County dressing room, we're going to go back to work. And if it's NHSCA. That's going to be the next event. If not, maybe it'll be a regional. I don't know what's going to happen with the regionals or, or freestyle states. And, and then on to Fargo, I'm assuming some of those events are going to happen. Um, you know, But our guys will go right back to work and start working towards next year. And you know, We think we could be in the mix again next year. Yeah, if you look at your brother's team, your brother's team had three for sure guys that could have been finalists and champs. So there's like, yep. you know, like Norwalk had three guys that could win. You and know, they haven't had a state champ in seventy something. I don't know. Seventy is it seventy yeah. some years? Nineteen seventy five or oh, something. Oh, seventy five. Okay. Uh, uh, Dan Pugh had won in the seventies, and they haven't had a state champ since. What do you guys talk about when you talk to your brother about this? You know, you guys were both in a really good position this year. We were going to see Norwalk on the board. Um, oh, yeah. I really like the 70 pounder. That guy's a stud. 95. Uh, and then was it Maloney? The other one? I mean, yep. they got three guys that could win. Yeah, what are you and him talking about? Guys could win. What are your conversations like with your brother about? What is he, what's he talking about? What's he saying about that? Oh, I think they're disappointed, you know, being that they're all three seniors and, uh, you know, had the capability of all three of them had a chance to win and we're wrestling really, really well and we're, we're going to be in the mix to win. And, um, you know, I, I think they wanted to get a champ on the board, if not multiple champs on the board. And unfortunately, you know, they, they lose that opportunity and those three seniors go on to the next chapter of their lives. And I think all three of them are going D1. Uh Hernandez is going to Penn. I believe Gabe is going to go to Cleveland See, State. Cleveland State, yeah. And, and I think Maloney's playing Division One football. Maybe DG. Don't yeah, I think that. Maloney's going to play football. I don't know though, but like they're <laughs> they're all three D one athletes. We know that, right? I mean that yeah. dude, that's a tough <laughs> yeah. that's a tough pill to swallow, man. That's that is like that's as, yeah. like in this whole story that might be the biggest story. Like. Yeah. That, that school right there, man, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, Eric Burnett's team was in a great position. Illyria, that was obviously another big story, you know? Like, they were going tit for tat with St. Ed's. I mean, dude, it was like, it was going to be a great tournament. But what do you say to the, you have two seniors, right, that you're going to end up losing? Yeah. What do you say to those guys? Now that you have contact with them, what can you say to them? Well, Owen Weaver, uh, our 95-pounder who probably was maybe the guy who wasn't supposed to get out of the districts, but we thought all along that he could. Um, he's, he's not playing in Ruston in college. He's going to go to Dayton. Um, and then our 38-pounder, Nicky Carino, is going to wrestle. We're not sure where. Maybe maybe a, a, a D3 BW or a Hound Hunter or something. Yeah, wants to be an engineer. Okay. Uh, so we've got great kids. They're just great kids. And yeah. uh, I feel terrible for them, but... Well, I guess we have the reason. I'm just not sure what the reason was here just yet. It's so crazy. Like, and like I, the the uncertainty for them. Like those guys, we don't know if they're going to get their prom, their graduation. Like, think about that. Like, at least Cole's a junior. Cole's got another year. Hopefully, Cole's got another year. We don't have another, you know, flare up of this thing. But 
Cole's at least got another year. You know what I mean? Like, what what's a senior parent do right now? And not, not even just wrestling, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's so many kids that, that I feel terrible for, you know. Uh, Ethan Hatcher of Mexico is this absolute monster. Doesn't get a chance to win a title. Yeah. Um, Carmody. There's a lot out there. Yeah, Jimmy Carmody. How about him? Yeah, Jimmy Carmody, another kid who can win a title. Um, you know, Victor's already won a title, but still... You know, doesn't get the opportunity to win three. Um, Jesus, you know, there's so many different kids. How about now we're we're never going to be able to see Seth Shoemate win four state titles. That guy's one of the biggest freaks in Ohio. Iron Man champ as a sophomore, state champ as a freshman, highest weight ever. And now we don't get to see that guy be a four-time state champ. That's crazy, right? Gonna, there's going to be have to be an asterisk next to his name, right? Yeah, that kid's an absolute monster. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, the stories are crazy, man, and it's all. All around, like all around, like I just can't think of them. And, and you guys are in there though, like because you had eight qualifiers. Nobody had eight qualifiers coming for Lake Catholic. You had just as many as Graham, Louisville, yep. Aurora. What did Graham have? Nine or eight? Don't quote me. I want to say us and Graham had eight, and Louisville and Aurora had seven. They had seven. So you guys are right there, man. That's what's wild. Yep. And the parity, the amount of parity in Division Two this year was awesome as well. You know, Louisville yeah. knocking off Graham in the state duels. That was good for wrestling. Um, and then, obviously, you know, there was some parity in Division One, even though St. Ed's won. I mean, they were down 20-0 to, to Elyria right. and stormed back and won 36-30. And then, you know, right. Edison obviously has a, – Edison, how about them? Yeah, what a great team. Yeah, a great team. Like, I would say they're one of the – they might have been one of the top three teams in Ohio. And, and in a duel – in a duel, they might not yeah. been able to beat. I mean, they're right there with Louisville, Graham. Oh, yeah. The only two teams they might not be able to beat in a duel are uh, uh, St. Ed's and, and Elyria, and and yeah. maybe maybe Wadsworth in a duel, right? They beat Wadsworth in a duel. Yeah, they beat Wadsworth and Perrysburg in a duel. Yeah. yeah, they're the real deal, man. So, so that's sure. another crazy story. Coach Herms, is, he's built a really good thing there. They're going to be back, though. You know what I mean? They're going to be like you guys. They got a lot of those guys are coming back. Most of those guys are coming back, except for the 195. Yeah, I'm in negotiation with the old Davey trying to get him on the schedule. Yeah, I'd like to see that. That would be good. That would be good. Yeah, yeah if you guys could do awesome. them. them. Yeah. Um, where do we go from here now, Coach? Like, what, what are you? What are you doing for work right now? Uh, I'm I'm self-employed. I'm a real estate appraiser, and we are. Uh, a critical business, so we're we're I'm continuing to work. You're going into homes and appraising homes. Do you have to go into a home always to appraise it? Most of the time, yes. Fannie Mae and some of the lenders are now starting to allow us to do drive-bys or, or exterior homes, I should say, and not actually go in. That's hard. <laughs> That's real hard. That's real yeah. hard, especially yeah. if the house has a basement. That's real hard. Right. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot going on with the basement, as you and I know, with foundation. But when you look at this, obviously the devastation to our economy and things like that, and um, it's it's going to tr- obviously it's not going to trickle down. It's a part of real estate because now people can't move homes because I, I don't know. Can, your wife wife is a realtor. Can she do showings right now? I'm guessing not. Uh, they are, believe it or not, doing some showings. A lot of the customers are saying, "Hey, we don't want anybody in the house," and they're doing. Uh, they're using a high-end camera to do some vid- virtual uh, video stuff. That's you know, so they're they're showing houses virtually. That's crazy. So it would be like this, like on my YouTube, or you could you could you know, because FaceTime, like you're saying, can be grainy, right? As you're going to yeah. see this video, this is actually a pretty good video that you're going to see. We could do it with my my camera. We could probably do the virtual, but like, yeah, that's hard. That's a part of the deal. That, you know, I know that Ferd, my brother Ferd, they you know, he's an iron worker. They still have guys doing jobs because they're working on like Air National Guard and stuff like that on bases, right. which we all know that's as essential as it gets yeah. um, as far as defense. But like me, Chad, my brother Chad and I, we're, we're obviously, he's at Woodmore, I'm at uh, Riverside. We're, I don't think we're going to go back to school. Is Lake Catholic going to go back? Have you heard anything? I haven't heard anything. I, I'm with you, though. I don't think we're going to go back. I think it's going to be online the rest of the way. As a parent, how do you feel about that? Um, I'm not super stoked about my kids ever doing anything online. I'm a I'm a face to face guy. You know what I mean? I'm not as much yeah. stuff as I put on the internet. I'd rather be talking to you face to face. With the circumstances, yeah. obviously, we can't do that with an infectious virus 
that's at epidemic, you know, uh, a pandemic level, right? Um, but like, how do you feel about that, Cole? Just doing online classes right now? I'm not a fan. Even like in my own work, I have to do continuing education every year, and you know, there's very few face-to-face -face classes anymore. Everything's online, and I don't like it. I don't get the same out of it as I do in a face-to-face -face situation. So, no, I I definitely think it's not not ideal. The face-to-face -face would would certainly be my preference. I like the 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 accountability that's involved that if I say something to you that you don't like, that maybe you're going to throw, you pick some headgear up and throw them at me or kick me in the shin or I don't know. Maybe, maybe your kid will be on his hands and knees behind me and you'll shove me over. I don't, you know, like it's the player. I don't know. I like the accountability of that though. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm serious. I like, I like, uh, I like being able to look people right in the face and ask them real questions and, and get their response. But obviously the, this doesn't call for it. Um, where do you think, you know, as a dad, you're in the recruiting process. I talked to Eric Burnett about it. Where are you in the recruiting process with Cole? Obviously, he's a if he wants to be a D1 guy, he's a D1 guy. He said Cleveland State was one he was, you know, he, he had taken an unofficial to. Pitt, those are two city campuses, um, and they're local cities to you guys as far as, you know, Pitt's two hours away, 40 minutes to downtown Cleveland. What do you think of those? And, and, and you know, as a dad, how are you in the recruiting process? Uh, I'm just trying to guide him as best I can. You know, at, at the end of the day, it's Cole's decision. Um, I've, you know, I've kind of urged him to kind of keep all options open and, you know, consider D2s, consider D1s, um, you know, get on some campuses, meet some coaches, meet some, you know, some teams and, uh, you know, just try to make a good decision of what fits, you know, him program wise and uh, coach wise and academically and campus and, you know, proximity from home and all those kind of good things that are important to them. Um, you know, this kind of puts a monkey wrench in things. We had, you know, expectations of doing officials this time of year. Um, we had some stuff scheduled, actually. And obviously that, that's all put on hold. Um, so I'm assuming the officials will come in the fall. And, you know, initially the plan had been to make a decision before next season started and kind of get that off his plate and kind of go through a senior year without the pressure of, you know, have to figure that out and sign, but uh, the process is going to get pushed back a little ways. Also, it's a situation where we put so much stock into it. You know, um, I talked to all these college coaches, and that's really where I know Jim Anderson really likes to see if a guy can win an Ohio State tournament. You know, I know that yeah. Scott Goodell wanted to see if Dylan Schauber could win a state title this year. You know what I mean? That's one of his guys. He wants to see that guy win. We put a lot of stock into this as far as recruiting. And, and I know you and I, you know, we're old school Ohio people. It's a big deal to win a state title in Ohio. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a real bummer to not get a chance to wrestle and, you know, prove, prove where you're at. And so, yeah, I don't know how colleges are going to handle it if, you know, if Ohio gets put on the back burner because they, they don't have to see what you did or, you know, if it puts more weight on, you know, junior duels. You know, I don't know if we'll get to do junior duels this year, but I don't. You know, if we do that again, uh, you know, Fargo, maybe NHSCA, super, certainly Super 32, um, you know, those, those events all, all of a sudden become more, I don't know, pressure packed maybe. Yeah, no, it really does. Um, and you guys never hide from Iron Man either. You're always an Iron Man. I always see you there. Yeah, yeah, no, we uh, we had five guys do Iron Man this year. Hopefully I, I'm going to work on getting even more next year. When you design that schedule, right, like you're putting it together right now, that's what you're doing with some of this time. If you're not doing drive-by appraisals. Um, I'm sorry I have to laugh at the drive-by appraisal, but I, I understand why the drive-by appraisal is necessary right now at the same time. So um, uh, when you're putting that schedule together, you always try and put the best teams on it. Would you try and duel like an Edison, or would you bring them to your tournament, or what would you do with them? Uh, either one. Uh, the, what we've been talking about right now is doing a duel. Um, I'd like to do it actually during school and get both student bodies in, in the building at the same time, and you know, a bunch of fans, and really make a make a big deal out of you know the the favorite to win in D three against you know maybe one of the favorites to win in D two, and just have an awesome duel with you know a thousand fans or so. I'm gonna try and get a camera there. If that happens, let's, I'm one of my cameras. We'll have multiple cameras there. I'll, you know, if I can be there, I'll be there. If it's not during my school day, that's awesome. I love something like that. I love 
that's a great idea. I like where your head's at on that. I know Riverside did it this year with Chardon, and then Chardon's <laughs> coming back to Riverside next year. So yeah. that'll be cool, and it's going to be an in-school, you know, during the during the the day. You know what I mean? That's really cool, actually. I really like that. Ah, uh, how do you not wear your kid out? That's the big thing. I told you how my nephew hasn't really done a whole lot of wrestling. How do you not wear your kid out? You know, he loves it. He decided, uh, I don't know, what was he in, seventh grade or something like that, or sixth grade, seventh grade, somewhere along there. He said, I've been playing football. I played in the golf league doing some other things. And he's like, Dad, I want to focus on wrestling. I want to be a Division I uh, college wrestler. And I don't want to miss junior high super 32. And he made a decision on his own that he wanted to focus on wrestling. And, um, you know, just the opportunities are there. I don't, I don't push him too much. I mean, he, I don't have to because he wants to do it on his own. You know, once in a blue moon, he'll say, hey, Dad, I don't feel well. I'm not going to go to this workout or I'm going to not going to make a lift, but it's, if it's once or twice a year, it's, it's pretty rare that he doesn't feel like doing, you know, doing his thing. So how many other kids, you have two other kids, right? Yeah. You got two got boys. An older boys a freshman in college and a daughter that's uh, a freshman at Lake Catholic. Okay. So you got boy, two boys and a girl. How much different is it raising every kid? How different is each kid to raise? <laughs> They're totally different. Totally different. Each kid has different interests and different personalities, and it's, it's different. But it's 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 fun all the same. Yeah, man. It's I'm I'm learning a lot of this right now. I I don't really know a whole lot, but I like to learn about things like that. And I'm learning. My two kids are just they're they are not the same. Um, your Cole was telling me he has been blood round at Fargo, blood yeah. round at Super Thirty Two. He's lost yep. in two state semifinals. Dude, something's <laughs> got <laughs> if something's got to go this guy's way, man. Yeah, blood round at Iron Man. I think he said maybe. Um, one of the years, I think he was a round away his sophomore year from the blood round. This year, he rolled his ankle really, really bad in practice doing sprints, and we sat him at Solon. Thinking, okay, we'll try to have him ready for Iron Man. And he was nowhere near ready for Iron Man, but he wouldn't listen. So we threw him out there, and he lost, uh, I don't know, 3-2 to two or something in the, maybe the third round on the championship side. And uh, there was just no way he could was going to make it all the way to the tournament. Yeah, that, that tournament too, right? Yeah. Freaking landmines everywhere, man. That tournament is unreal. My buddy came out, uh, Kevin Roberts, came out. He brought his kid from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. They flew in from Spokane. They were here for five days for the Ironman. <laughs> five days, dude. They showed up on a Wednesday and they left on a Sunday. Share that with your kid how lucky he is. Where he He's in the center of it all. Everything's yep. like 45 minutes or an hour or two hours away. He's got it made. Let him know that. They were here for five <laughs> days, dude. And the kid did take seventh. He's tougher than it's not. You know, he's yeah. a two-time Fargo All-American in freestyle. He's really good, Drew Roberts. But but they were here for five days. Yep. That's in your backyard. Your kid can sleep in his bed every night. Yep. So yep. it's crazy. So, all right, hey, you got anything else for me? What what else you got for me? What am I missing here? What am I? What storyline am I missing? What did I miss? What didn't we talk about that I that I'm uh what 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 do we what do we got? Jeez, Zeb, I don't know. Um. You know, I'm real excited about next season. I think we've got a great group of guys back. We've got six, uh, six state qualifiers back. You know, I think a number of those guys would have, would have, would have been on the podium this year. Um, I think we're going to have some impact freshmen potentially come in and uh, get Tommy Young Grady eligible again when he transferred from Mayfield. Uh, lost his eligibility. We, we did appeal the OHSAA, but lost that appeal. But uh, if we get him back in the lineup, um, I think we can make some noise next year. That's awesome. What's the big tournaments next year? Ironman, GIT, Wadsworth, where else? Uh, we'll go to North Canton and Brexville. Uh, GIT, those would be the big ones. Jesus, Pete, you don't hide. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hide. And then <laughs> oh, my God. And then who's your regional for state duels? Uh, this year we had to wrestle Aurora in the finals, and we lost Aurora by a point. Would they lose to Louisville by a point? You beat Graham by a point or two. I mean, it was 
It was pretty tight. So much crime on just Northeast Ohio. That's the big thing, man. That district, how you guys navigated that district this year, that was that was the big that was gonna be the thing. And that was what kind of probably you know, uh Louisville had so many big scorers, but they lost some guys that they were fringe guys that could have helped them with seven right. ace play finishes and everybody was gonna get them on everybody was gonna get three or four finalists, don't you think? I think potentially, yeah. I mean, yeah, look I, at it. That's what it came down to, was getting the guys in the final. Yeah, and that's what it comes down to. But I think that everybody's going to have an equal amount of finalists, and then it would have came down to seventh and eighth placers, fifth and sixth yeah. placers, right? Yep. Or guys who made the semifinals and then maybe slid to sixth or were able to fight back and take third. There's just – we really missed a great tournament, man. It does suck, and I love, I hate re, re-ripping the freaking scab open, but <laughs> it's, it was such it would. I mean, Division One, man. Division one would have been just off the chain. Oh. Yeah, so many good matchups in Division One. I. I was looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. So all right. I got these two maniacs trying to get in here. Will you hang out on the line for a little bit? Yeah, for sure. All right, let me cut this live broadcast. Thanks for the time, Coach Hibner. Good luck you to the it. Cougars yeah. next year. We'll be catching up with you guys, obviously at Iron Man, and I'm gonna get the Miller boys in here to say goodbye to you, all right? All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Here, stick around. Here they are. Here, here.